Welcome everybody to this uh, week's edition of Setaru Live. This happens to be the first iteration of this for the year 2021, so welcome. Really excited today to talk a little bit about Setaru outage and leaks and breaks got you down, let Setaru guide you to our next outage event. Today with me, I have Andrew Hargraves, Chief Poobah of Product Solutions. He will be doing the demonstration for me today and providing some expertise on the wonderful application that is Setaru Outage. Andrew, you want to say hi to the folks out there? Good morning. Yes. Happy 2021. Everything is going to be great. I like it. Some good prog prognostication early in the year. All right. So everyone today, um, as usual, we'd like to start off by talking a little bit about um, how this, this webinar and this topic fit into the overall picture of Setaru. And as you see here on screen, we have our DROPS uh, acronym which represents the, uh, the path to utility automation. Uh, most utilities are somewhere on this, uh, on this progression on a timeline, um, but there's a lot of things we wanna talk about today. I'm gonna to show a little bit, we're gonna be talking about a couple different applications. We're gonna show you a little bit of Setaru Omni, a little bit of field force, some outage, gonna skip over these for today. But as usual, uh, most of these connections are done through our Setaru Connect integration platform. Um, outage is one of those applications that really crosses a lot of the, the, the divide here in terms of moving from digital towards self-driving. Um, the aspects we'll show today, we'll, we'll touch on almost every letter. So I'm pretty excited about outage. It's a really broad platform with a lot of uh, different values to the utilities that are using it. So let's go ahead and introduce the webinar agenda for today, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So today, as usual, we'll do a little bit of introduction. Um, we do have some poll questions for you today. So for those of you that have not attended in the past, uh, we're going to have a couple of poll questions in the beginning, which we'll ask you to answer, and then we'll, uh, we'll review those at the end. Then we're going to go ahead and talk about why you might need an outage management solution. We'll do a quick introduction to the Setaru outage application, and then Andrew will take it away with a demonstration of some of the core functions that the product provides, and we'll talk about some of those unique takeaways and insights that it provides. We'll wrap up at the end, uh, reviewing those poll questions, give you guys a chance for question and answer, and potentially even solicit some ideas for next time. So looking forward to it today. Let's go ahead and hop in. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pop up on screen for everybody these poll questions. Um, I'm gonna read through them for you here in a minute. And the idea is we'll have this poll open throughout the, uh, throughout the session. Well, I just launched it here and you should see a new pop up on your screen. Um, this is a separate window that you can keep off to the side. And if you could, if you would do us a favor and try and answer the three questions for you, for us from your utilities perspective, it would be super helpful. Um, you'll have a little bit of time towards the end, right before we wrap up, I'll let everybody know that we're about to uh, close the poll um, to give you a prompt to just make sure you've answered all three. And then we'll go ahead and, and take a review of those uh, together. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll read through these questions for you real quick just in case uh, it makes it easier. And then we'll move into the rest of the webinar. So poll question number one, we're really trying to see how your current utility tracks outage events. Um, this can be anywhere from you don't really track outages, outages as events to you know, what applications you might use for that process. We find that uh, seeing where people are on this path is super helpful. The second uh, poll question is how are you managing outage events? Um, and these are, not necessarily building on each other, but can be in, independent, um, whether or not you manage things as an event or whether you're just kind of handling it as work orders. There's a continuum here as well. And then the final question is, what are the benefits that you look for in an outage management solution? And I will say that we came up with a much larger list than this. Um, there was a little bit of a limitation in the Zoom webinar to only allow a certain number of responses. So you'll see this slide has more uh, than the poll allows us for. So um, feel free to just answer that one as best you can. And with that one, ideally go ahead and pick up to three, uh, three choices. That'll give us a little more information. So I see some of you have already started answering. I very much appreciate that. So again, I'll, uh, I'll prompt you guys as we get towards the end of the session um, to just wrap up those, uh, those responses and we will uh, take a quick review of them at the end. All right, Andrew, you ready for this? I think so, it's 2021, I'm ready for it. All right, it is 2021, let's go ahead. All right, so do I need an 
uh, outage management solution. So Andrew, I am definitely not the expert when it comes to this. You are the expert. So uh, I've always been told that outage management is really only useful for these catastrophic events. And I'm hoping you can maybe tell me if I'm accurate, if I'm right, or uh, if there's more things I need to know. Well, I'd, I'd say that you definitely want something to help you if you're presented with that situation. Yeah, that's pretty bad right there. Um, <clears throat> but if, no, of course, we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to flatten the curve, just to continue with the, the 2021 terminology here. Um, and we want to be able to uh, be sort of proactively managing uh, our network um, to avoid situations like this now, or rather I should say minimize because inevitably what we're showing on the screen here will happen. Um, and you want to be as prepared for it as possible, but through leveraging um, a lot of the tools that we're going to show today and, and software and practices and principles we're going to discuss, then you can uh, minimize and mitigate uh, situations like we're talking about here. Okay, great. Well, let's take a look then at some of the stuff we might uh, we might be doing besides just handling a massive water main break like that. So uh, I wanted to just sort of start with the, the classic foundational asset management 101, okay, to make sure that everybody's on the same page and everybody um, has an understanding of, of what we're assuming. Um, this idea around consequence of failure, so how bad is something when it breaks, any of my assets, that is. Um, and then what is the probability of any of those assets failing and exposing me to that consequence? And those two things coupled together are the risk to our organization, okay? So that's, that's the underlying principle here that we're sort of assuming everybody knows, everybody understands. Absolutely. And this is a flashback to the webinar we did in August on uh, unplanned outage events. Only looking forward into 2021, Dylan. I don't want to okay. talk about that. Sorry, not looking back. I understand. All right. Let's talk a little bit about asset management. Sure. So the other, the other principle of this that I think it's sometimes glossed over is um, this idea around uh, information about your assets, okay, which is, hey, well, I've got a nice, rich GIS data set, or I have some kind of other asset registry data set. Um, that's, it might be, uh, it might be holistic, but how accurate is it? How, how accurate uh, is the position of that? So do we know where these things are? Okay, especially if they're somehow um, covered by water swishing around your ankles or it's snowing like it is outside here, um, or there's been a Hurricane Sandy roll through and everything is now covered in two or three feet of, of sand, right? I need to know where my assets are as the very first sort of plank in my, my strategy here. But that's not even half the battle because now that I know where everything is, then okay, but does that mean I can actually get at it? And what I mean by accessible is, can I lift that cover and get to that, that valve key or is it full of grime, full of dirt, and I don't have a back truck that can get to it? Or, you know, has the box misaligned itself and I can't get on there? Or maybe it's just underneath a parked car or behind a fence with a mean dog and I, and I can't get at it or I'm not prepared to get it. So that's other information that you want to have on hand. You want to record about your assets so that, again, you're, you're smarter, you're wiser, you're prepared um, when you need to go find that thing. And then, of course, the, the last piece there uh, would be the ultimate kick in the pants if you were to find it, unearth it, and then, of course, it didn't work, okay? Um, that would be the heartbreak scenario. Um, so it's important to understand that just having a nice, rich data set of all of my 7,500 valves in my system or whatever it be isn't enough. I need to know that spatially these things are accurate. I need to know that I can actually get at these things when I really need to, and they haven't been paved over. Um, and that when I do get on these things that they're gonna turn, they're gonna operate and they're gonna do what they're supposed to be able to do. Yeah, yeah, and Andrew, I think, you know, one of the nice things is, and you'll see in the rest of the presentation today, Setter Outage is really designed to allow for 
you know, both when you're just trying to be proactive and plan for something that is known, right? But in, in these times that Andrew's talking about where it's an emergency is not the time to find out that something's not operable, right? So there is that whole concept that I set concept of the footprint of the outage event is based on, you know, time, right? So the quicker we can respond, the quicker we can access this information, the better off we're going to be. Yeah. All right, last, last one, Andrew. Go right ahead. Um, so I have all my information. I have my, my full asset registry. I have an understanding of where those things are. I have an understanding of uh, that the, what condition they're in and that I can get to them, okay? But in and of itself, that's a lot of data to be juggling, okay? What I need is some kind of solution to help manage that information for me, present it in a, in a digestible way for me. OK, if it's all on paper and it's back in the office and it's in a filing cabinet, it might be completely uh, holistic in what it covers, but it's no good to me if I'm sat in my truck out in the street. Conversely, if it's in different piles, I have to go and I have to understand what relates to what and the outcome of turning this valve versus, you know, turning that valve down the street. So the point here is that. Um, like you hit on before, the set of platform allows you to collect all of that information on the previous slide. What, where is my stuff? What condition is my stuff in? What does my stuff do? Um, but something like outage pulls all of that information together and mixes it up into this beautiful cake to help you understand that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not going to direct you to a certain valve. I'm going to direct you to another valve because you're going to get a bigger impact you're going to reduce that footprint or that timestamp of this outage. Um, and it's going to be a much more optimal, optimal use of all of that information. Absolutely. Yeah, work management is where the rubber meets the road in this case. I was awesome. going more with my Great British Baking analogy. I, I did notice you got a, a British Baking uh, reference in there within the first 10 minutes. So good job on that one. All right, let's go ahead and move on then and talk about the setter outage platform itself. Um, so, you know, we're going to kind of cover three different core functions today. Um, what we're going to try and do for everybody out there is sort of um, walk you through them in the order that they occur when you implement the software and then start using it. Um, but in each case, we're going to try and tie out to the insights and value that each of those things provide, because these functions are relatively um, an open book, right? You can really use them the way you want to. There's a lot of flexibility. And the goal here is that, you know, the value you get is going to be based on what, what you learn through the process. So Andrew, let's go ahead and get started with kind of the, the beginning steps of the, the process and the initial implementation. Sure. So again, right, to shine a light on something that I think sometimes the value isn't recognized initially, um, is that the initial setup and configuration of Setaru outage isn't just a task we need to get through in order to then begin using the app and see the value at that point. The initial setup itself offers a lot of value. And what I mean by that is it's essentially a consultative process between us and our customers. Um, and, it, and it results in a health check of your GIS data. Okay. So how holistic is your data, not just in terms of the sheer number of assets that we have marked up, but the information behind all of those assets. Is that information useful to me? Or is there holes in that information that I could set up alternate workflows to capture and fill, fill those holes? Um, and it also provides that sort of first level um, criticality analysis that we talked about a couple of slides before too. So, um, you know, we have to run a process almost a pre-baked process about, um, uh, let's say how many, uh, how many outage scenarios is each individual valve um, potentially gonna appear in. And so that provides this sort of prioritization schedule to help me understand that if I have a valve that appears in 14 or 15 potential outage scenarios versus a valve that just appears in one, then my 14 valve is a, is a significantly more uh, critical valve than, than the other one, right? And so um, that's the information that sort of comes to light as part of the implementation and configuration process with Setaru Outage. Um, and so you don't even need to wait till we get the app. 
up and running before you can start to see some of the value here. Yeah, that's a great, Andrew. Let's go ahead and talk then about the kind of the concept of using it for planned outages or training or preparedness, because I think that's a, a real key to the value. Yeah, exactly. So um, on your first slide, you know, you had the big dramatic blowout. Um, and we said we, we really want to avoid those situations as much as possible. And although that's kind of the example that we always defer to, even ourselves, sometimes when we're showing outage, um, the, the real value of it, the real use of it is in, is in the calmer times um, and doing what you're saying, right? Which is we can plan for a known shutdown. So we have a number of consultants that, um, uh, sorry, clients who work with external consultants and contractors in order to do this, to plan an outage. So if I'm gonna replace a main and you're my contractor, I can run a simulation in outage against that length of pipe to understand in an ideal world, what's gonna happen when you before you turn up on site with a backup, right? Now, just to prove that point out, I can run the scenario and then I can go out in the field and I can validate and do all of that stuff we talked about on the slide to make sure these valves are really here, they're really accessible, and yes, they're operable and they do what they're supposed to do. I've now done all, done all of my due diligence, managed and recorded through Sedaru Outage, so that when you as a contractor turn up with a backhoe and you get to work, then that's the scenario that we've planned out and that's what we expect to happen. And so we're a bit more relaxed about it. We're more comfortable with what's gonna happen. Um, and like you're saying, we can sort of uh, issue out proactive communications, right? We can talk to our stakeholders. We can talk to effective customers. We can say that you're gonna be out for the next three or four hours and we can either provide bottled water or we can make sure that we're able to at least switch service back on at that date and time. Um, and we can just sort of uh, open it up to what you're saying here, awareness of impact, right? Um, because this is the kind of scenario that occurs utility-wide all over the country, okay? Um, if we're proactive, then we're planning to replace these assets, especially in my part of the world here. I see it happening a lot. Um, and we actually got a note through the door the other day to say just this thing would be happening. So. Don't just go for the drama, Dylan. Um, <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with with planning. Um, it's not as fun. It's not as sexy, but you get a lot of value out of center outage. Yeah, and Andrew, I mean, I know it was last year, so we're not talking about it. But you know, we did talk about sort of the the issues that occur with outages, right? They are not just economic. They are not just about water loss. Uh, there's a customer service interaction piece to it, and you know. When your stakeholders can get a message in advance telling them when the water will be out for how long and you can hit that mark that goes a long way towards proving the value of uh, of these types of software products all right andrew let's talk about the the sexy one now that you you mentioned it let's talk about the big bang dealing with the event uh, everyone knows production stress is fun so you know let's let's talk about what happens when that big water main breaks well if, if you've lived through one of them, you, you, you wouldn't want to, right? You wouldn't want to remember those days. Um, and, and again, just to drive this point home, right? It doesn't have to be a major outage here. Any, all of those bullet points you have there are perfectly applicable to a planned outage scenario um, in order to, to, to do what we've said before, right? Which is minimize the size of the footprint and minimize the outage time for that, even if it is a planned outage. But Okay, I'll indulge you. I know what you're after. Um, like you said, right? Coordination of work is a, ma is, a, is a major part of an event like this. Um, an outage, although in a few minutes, I'm gonna show it to you on my iPad, um, is just as easily accessible in a, in a regular old browser. And so it's available to your customer service team, like you mentioned, okay? Because they may be the front line who are the first ones aware of this and they want to start this simulation process, right? Um, but it allows me in the field, leveraging a smart device um, and an app to be able to access all of that same information, not a copy of it that's sort of transmitted or passed back and forward, but this is real time um, in order to 
to share and see all of that information and to see what my fellow co-workers are up to, where they are, if they're already tackling some of this, um, and to not necessarily sort of be sitting, waiting to be given direction, right? I'm empowered with this data and the real-time aspect of it to go and, and help solve this problem. And then, uh, like you're saying, it also takes a lot of the hard work out of it uh, in other aspects too, right? So um, as I step through the process, planned or not planned, it's built into outage, it's baked into outage to um, be recording certain numbers, calculating other ones for me, so that after everything is done, um, some of those values are calculated for us and we can generate reports. Um, that's not something that I'm probably gonna be thinking about in the heat of the moment. Okay, like, hey, I better figure out the GPM of this leak right here because we've got to report this back. Um, but outage manages that for me just sort of inherently as part of its workflow, right? Part of its DNA. Um, and so after the fact, we can sort of have a post-mortem. We've recorded everything and we can look back and we can say what happened, what went right, what went wrong, how could we have done this better, both in terms of reacting to the event but also in terms of the ultimate aim here, which is to try to uh, dampen down the possibility of that event even occurring, okay? Yeah, Andrew, I think I just wanna call out one thing you said, because I, I think it is critical to, you know, what Setter is trying to do. The software we build is intended to be complementary, right? Is to enhance the people in the field and the decision makers in the office. The goal really is to have it handle the things that you shouldn't be focused on in these events, right? When, when this critical event's occurring, you should be focused on executing the, the steps that you're asked to do, which valves to turn off, how to isolate the system. And the, the product is supposed to, you know, bridge that gap and bring the rest of that functionality so that at the end, you get the results you're looking for. So I'm excited for you to show it to us. Let's go ahead and uh, hop in if you're ready. And yeah, what you're saying is is very important. Um, how easy is this thing to use? Because, um, okay, less and less so these days, you're faced with the sort of grumpy, curmudgeonly old timer who says, I don't know how computers work, okay? Where that used to be the case, we're moving away from that now. And everybody, I would say, has had at least some exposure to some kind of map-centric app like this right? Um, but it should be inherent and easy to use. Uh, and like you said, it shouldn't be a burden uh, and it should be safe, right? Especially in a scenario like this, we want, the, we want you to be inputting data, but we want you to be doing that as easy, as quickly, and as safely as possible. I don't want you looking down at your iPad, tapping away at the screen here while you're trying to turn a valve in the middle of four lanes of traffic and there's an 18 wheeler coming towards you at 70 miles an hour, right? Um, that's not a fun scenario. And so the, the more you can have your head up on a swivel looking around you, the better, the safer you are. And that's a main driver here um, for all of our software, but especially from the sort of field aspect where we have some pretty significant experience. But anyway, here I am. I'm on my iPad. Like I said, I could access outage in a browser and maybe somebody else at my organization has, and they've created a couple of simulation outage events for me. So the first place to start is just there in the top left. And I see my start button. Um, and in this case, you can see I've got a little number in there, little number one. And what that means is it's drawing my attention to the fact that um, Andrew, who's logged in over there on the right hand side, has a new outage event that I've not, uh, I've not clicked on and I've not seen yet and I've not paid attention to. So I have the one that I know about in my list of uh, active events over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so this inoperable on First Street is something I'm aware of, something I've seen before. But the one above it, you'll see it's sort of highlighted and bold and it's a little brighter. And if I click on that, um, I can go and I can see that event. And again, that might be a scenario that's either a planned outage. Uh, we might have a contractor replacing that main that you have there, or like I said, maybe customer service or somebody else um, alerted us to an outage there. and Somebody else has already put that in the system. So if I'm charged with sort of 
managing all of these across my jurisdiction or territory, then I can go here and I can understand the state of play that we're in, right? So that's a nice part of outage, which is um, for the people in the street who are managing this thing, you're predominantly going to interact with this panel on the right-hand side that's going to turn green as we move through each one of these steps. But if you're the boss uh, and you're at home and you want to log in and check on the progress of something so you can send out a tweet and let everybody know how, uh, how well we're reacting to the situation, we have this timeline on the bottom that marks the time when each one of those steps turns green and was um, essentially completed, right? So we can uh, quickly and easily turn this on and I can see that from the moment that this thing was initially called in to the moment that we notified one call was only a few minutes. And then, you know, the next logical step will be that we're gonna go and we're gonna isolate all of those valves, which as we've said, using other parts of the Setaru platform, we're confident we know where they are. We're confident that we know their condition. So we can see in this example already, and this is a nice example to highlight here, that we already understand there's a couple of inoperable valves in the mix here, okay? That might've been identified through regular old Sederu field force workflows, through valve exercising and tying into something like a, like a Wax valve turn machine, okay? We understood that information and Outage took this and it said, I'm not even gonna bother sending you to those valves because I know that they don't work. So I'm not gonna waste your time. Um, and if this was a planned outage event, then now we have the opportunity to get at those valves, perform some proactive repairs and sort of build that redundancy back into our system because quite honestly, we probably have more customers out of service than we need to here as a result of a couple of these inoperable valves, okay? Yeah. And Andrew, that's like, I mean, just that's really one of these, these sort of secondary benefits, correct, of what we're talking about here is you know, through this process, you're identifying work that needs to be performed on other assets. You're identifying whether or not there is the level of redundancy you're looking for. And these are, you know, as we move towards a more resilient, you know, water infrastructure, these are important insights into prioritizing capital investments, preventative maintenance, et cetera. It's secondary when you're dealing with an emergency like this, but really it's it's the bread and butter of daily asset management, right? I want to find every one of these inoperable valves and I want to fix them so that they're not a problem when I, when I have an emergency. So the priorities shift, okay? But like you said, we're collecting it all. And then however you, you can prioritize your day, if you're not having an outage event, if you're having a nice calm cup of tea and a nice slice of cake, then you're able to, you know, look at your inoperable valves, dedicate your crews to going out there, finding them, and repairing them, right? So um, let's see how we can tackle something on the fly though, because it seems like you're you're obsessed with this idea. Um, so- You know, I just want the action, Andrew, come on. <laughs> I know, I know, you're so Hollywood. Um, so uh, here's another thing. I can search for any of my assets, okay? Um, or I can search um, for a street, or even better, a street intersection. So I've already got one plumbed in here because I type slowly. I can pick from a sort of series of predetermined leak rates, um, or I can enter a custom number here. But you know, the thought behind this process is probably is an emergency. You probably don't want to be typing away too much on the keyboard here. So we'll just give you these predetermined options in order for you to just sort of quickly be able to tap on the map and hit the, uh, hit the appropriate value, okay? So now, first things first, um, safety's first. And so if you have the luxury of being able to coordinate around your local 811 or call before you dig vendor, then we provide an option here for you to sort of branch straight out to them, maybe submit for a ticket for other utilities to come and do a markup. That's a big part of these planned outages that we keep talking about. But of course, if it isn't, if this is an emergency and we need to get the backhoe out, then we can just mark this step green. We can just mark this step complete uh, and we can sort of move on. But again, we've provided an input here for that step to be recorded. 
okay? We're sort of checking a box and making sure that we're doing our due, due diligence around that. So here are all those valves that are in that outage that we looked at before. And as we said, there's a couple of them that are uh, known to be inoperable. And the scenario that outage ran on our behalf took into account all of that information um, from our asset registry, from our GIS, collected through potentially other workflows outside of Cedru outage here. Um, and to the best of its knowledge, based on that data, this is the scenario on the street. But of course, when we get there and something changes, maybe we can get there and we can say, okay, this thing is, our data indicated was operable. Um, but now that we're actually on it in real life, um, we find that to not be the case, then we can sort of rerun a scenario like that and we can change this data on the fly um, and we can sort of recalculate our results in order to um, get that new set of answers, okay? So we're not stuck with that one scenario that we ran there at the very beginning. We can react on the fly to what we find in the street. And you can see now that, okay, we found another inoperable valve. We probably have some more customers who are out of service now. We've got a larger footprint to deal with, but we're at least in control of the other half of the equation, which is we have time on our side now because now we understand that and we know that and Cedar outage can direct us to the appropriate valve further downstream that now we can go and we can isolate through that, okay? So as I work through this or my um, colleagues work through this alongside me to help me tackle this pretty major outage, um, you can see that again, we're mocking this up real time, okay? I can go back into other corners of the Cedaru platform like Fieldforce or Omni or something like that. And I can um, actively see the same information if I was to go search out one of these valves. As soon as I hit the save button here, it's saved back in the Cedaru cloud and therefore back on Fieldforce or wherever you choose to look at it, then you're gonna see that information reflected real time back there too, right? So um, I'm trying to tap dance while I work my way through all of these valves <laughs> here. Uh, and I don't think- Andrew, so generally like you're saying, right? Like these these specific valve shutoffs would likely be dispatched to field force for the different field crews to take care of, right? And these would be coming in in real time as they're changed in the field? It could be that, or it could be other colleagues using, um, using outage themselves mm -hmm. on their own iPads or something like that, right? Um, it, it, it doesn't matter. It's the same data that's, thread all the way through the, the Cedaru platform, like I said, right? So field force or outage, whatever's in your hand, that's fine. Um, but, it, but it's important to point out the sort of real-time aspect of this and, and to collaborate around that, like you said earlier, right? That's a big advantage. So for sure. So we shut down all our valves. That next section has turned green, okay? We're on to the, we're on to the next step after that. Um, which is of course to notify our customers. And again, it's another good excuse to bring in um, other players inside of the utility. So um, I can write from outage here on my iPad or more appropriately through say my browser, looking at the same active outage event. If I'm customer service back in the office, I can actually generate a report. See that button in the bottom right there I can kick out all of these affected customers, um, which means then I could take that, I could plug that into a robo dialer or something. And I IVR. could- In it, well, IVR. Yep. Outbound IVR system, I got you. What's wrong with a robo dialer? Um, it's too close to RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> compliance. Um, but ultimately, like we're saying, right, we can, we can share this information across so that my customer service team are in charge of that side of things. Um, they could potentially mark that done. Uh, and I understand now that everybody's been made aware. Uh, I don't have to go knocking on doors. I don't have to go drop door hangers. I can just get on with the main, the main business of 
repairing the water main here. And what am I looking at? Well, um, I'm looking at a 12 inch PVC. Uh, that's what the GIS data um, indicates. Uh, and, I, and remember, one of the things we said is we want uh, some of the hard work to be done for us, right? Some of those numbers to be calculated, some of these reports to sort of be either auto generated or those values grabbed ready to be used later on. Um, I can see that um, when this thing started, so this thing started yesterday, we're gonna repair it right here, right now. It's been running for a little over 24 hours. Um, it's a 12 inch with an estimated PSI of, I don't know, something like 50. Um, we'll record some information about the type of break here. Uh, you like the drama, so I'm gonna say this was a total blowout. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say that because of that, it was 12 inch there. And you can see that on the bottom of the screen here, it's calculating my estimated GPM. It's calculating the total number of gallons lost over that 24, 25, 26 hour period. Um, I can put some comments in here. Um, let's say something like, what is a Puba? Is that how you spell Puba? <laughs> Puba. Puba. Um, <laughs> And, and it's done, right? Uh, I sort of recorded the cursory information about what we find when we dig open the road because that's a, that's a massive opportunity that you never wanna miss, right? Whenever you're exposing underground assets to daylight and you have the opportunity to get eyes and hands on them and record something about them, take that opportunity. And again, that's why we wanna make it quick, easy and painless through something like like set of outage or set of field force here, okay? Have the device in your hand and just quickly put that information in there. Um, okay, so we're done, right? We've repaired our, uh, our 12 inch PVC. And again, you can see the timeline sort of turning green along the bottom as I'm doing the steps out in the field. So Dylan's back in HQ in the warm, he can log in, he can understand that, wow, Andrew's working well here. He's closed down, I think it was eight or 12 valves. He's already fixed that pipe and he did all of that in about five minutes. I'm gonna send a tweet out about how proactive and how wonderful our field staff are, okay? Um, now, final step that I've got to do in order to turn this uh, line back on and restore the services, I've got to flush it, okay? So uh, there's a lot of hydrants in this area as you can see on the map there, um, but um, outage will sort of help me understand which ones are optimal or the best ones to use for this purpose for flushing. Okay. I'm not going to waste my time going to the wrong one, letting it flow for 15 or 20 minutes and there be no change. And, um, especially out West where you're required to record every drop of water that you spill on the street as part of your daily operations. Then, you know, if you can't justify that, then you can be in in trouble. I was going to say hot water, but it would just be water. Um, but I can record something here. Okay. Uh, put my pedo in. I flushed this thing for five minutes. Did I take a sample? No, I didn't. Um, I could put some comments in, but again, you're seeing it's calculating that GPM and gallons lost, how much was spilled on the street is part of this workflow. Um, and it's saving all of that under the umbrella of this particular outage scenario, okay? Uh, I could step through the other ones, but you get the idea. It's marked itself green because we're done with that step and it's marked itself green on the timeline on the bottom there. So again, Dylan can log in from the safety and the warmth of the office. He can see where I am in the process uh, and he can send out, again, he can live tweet this event, right? Hey, we're back in service, you know? I think all in that only took about five or six minutes. Well, and Andrew, you really, you pointed out the biggest difference between just an electronic work order system and an outage management right there, right? Which is all these things that we're doing are captured as part of a larger event with context, right? We could, you know, in a standard electronic work order system, you could go do all of these individual items and capture this information, but there would be no context and no tie out to things like that GPM estimate, right? In the other aspects of how this works. So it's really tying together a lot of functionality. Exactly, exactly. How many, you know, what if you went to the wrong hydrant, like I said, and you stood and you flushed it for 20 or 30 minutes, not realizing that it's not even impacting the pipe that you're trying to flush, right? Um, so yeah, you could you could record that you've done that event, but but here we're, we're joining the dots 
in not just a sort of hydraulic perspective, but in a well understood water utility workflow perspective, right? Um, so I'm not gonna open the rest of these. I'm gonna let you see what's left. Uh, I'm done for the day. Now you back in the office can see using something like Sederu Omni that we've got at least one, two, three inoperable valves out there that I can't do anything about right now in the street. Um, but you can bundle up that work and issue it out for somebody else to go and take care of. So we're repairing this problem and we're being a bit more proactive. We're building that resilient resiliency and redundancy back into our system here to where should something happen in this area in the future, hopefully we'd have a smaller footprint, we'd be able to react in a, in a, in a, in a faster time span. Um, so again, you know, we're sharing this information across to every corner of the Cedaru platform in order to make sure that it's being used, um, but not just used, used in the logical way that it should, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So um, those of you, you know, attendees just want to give you kind of the two or three minute heads up that we're going to wrap up the demonstration here shortly. So if you could finish uh, responding to the poll questions, I'll be closing the poll here once uh, Andrew shows us off the outputs and reports coming out of the system. Yeah, so uh, like I said, uh, maybe my job's done in the field. Uh, I'm going to go home and have a hot shower. But, um, you know, you back there might need to, uh, you might want to interrogate what just happened. Like we said, have a bit of a post-mortem after the fact, right? Um, you can very quickly and easily produce an, an outage summary report here. We can see that we had about 46 customers impacted on this. It took us 11 valves to shut this down and three of which were actually inoperable. And we lost over 32 million gallons over that 24, five, six hour period. Um, we get a little map of the area affected. And um, we can see uh, other information too, right? So here's our repair, 12 inch PVC, uh, and a comment of well, what is a Puba, which I think is a fine question to ask. Um, here's each of the individual valves and highlighted in red are those three that didn't work. So like I said, they're already over there waiting in Cedar Omni for Dylan to assign out for somebody to go repair, but they're also listed here so that we can present this back to the board. Okay, we could say like, we understand why this grew to an 11 valve shutdown and a 46 person impacted shutdown. And we're already proactively um, trying to repair these three valves here. Um, here are those customers affected. Uh, so again, if our customer service used their IVR to reach out to these customers, we'd have information about if they were notified or not. Um, and uh, we, can, we can understand our, you know, if we could improve on that process. Um, and we've got some sort of other relevant information again about the pipe, um, but it's a nice little summary report, right? And this is just an example. Uh, we have all of that information stored in the back end so that you can interrogate it and pull it out in whatever way makes sense for your utility. Awesome. Andrew, we good for me to take back over? Go for it. Wonderful demo, sir. Appreciate it. All right. So with that, guys, we are going to uh, go ahead and take a look. I'm going to close the poll questions right now. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at those and uh, we'll have a little time for some question and answer. Um, if you do have questions, there's a Q&A uh, button down in your Zoom controls. We'd be happy to answer those now. Um, um, but if you also want to reach out to us uh, directly, we, we'd be happy for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the results of the poll here. And we'll take a look over this and uh, and get start going through it. So. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm pulling them up on my end. Hopefully you guys just got a little pop up that allows you to see the poll results as well. Um, so for question number one, how do you currently track outage events at your utility? Looks like uh, a, a good, a good uh, cross section of answers. Um, but it sounds like the majority of your organizations are basically tracking these events in a spreadsheet. Um, you know, my experience with that, having worked with a lot of utilities is that that is a bit of a retrospective uh, process and is done after the fact. Um, I know how tedious that can sometimes be, especially if the event was large. Um, Andrew, any any thoughts about that, those responses? It seems like a pretty, pretty, like I said, a pretty broad spectrum of uh, 
different systems being used? Yeah, well, I, th I mean, I think you hit on the hit on it, right? Which, like you said, is um, after the fact, you might track it in a spreadsheet, but during the event itself, were you were you focused on what you needed to be collecting and recording at the time, or or for what you want to talk about later? And um, either way, right? We saw, like you pointed out, that outage sort of takes care of all of that for you and allows you to perform that post mortem with the relevant data. Yeah, absolutely. All right, for number two, um, again, very kind of a, a broad spectrum of solutions and how people address it. Um, you know, it is worth pointing out though that as great as Cedru outage is, there is still the need for verbal discussions and dispatch. You know, there is still communication that's going to occur outside the platform. Um, but yeah, I, I, I see, uh, you know, again, electronic work order system, dispatching to field crews. Um, some people are, you know, using other products. So a, a very, again, interesting spectrum. And it really does kind of show where, where the market is in terms, especially in the water utilities uh, with outage management. It, it's not as, it hasn't been as high of a priority it has, as it has been in say gas and electric. Um, but we we're starting to see much more understanding of this, especially uh, as Andrew mentioned in the West where there's more strict requirements about tracking uh, water spilled onto the ground. All right, so for the last one, even though we had a truncated list of potential responses, um, we we're looking for the top three benefits that you guys would be looking for in an outage management solution. I think the, the winner there uh, makes the most sense to me. What, what are your thoughts, Andrew? Um, let me scroll down to the answer. Info at my fingertips. Good, I'm glad the message got across. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but that's that that that's relevant, right? I mean, it's the theme of the day, uh, and like we've said, it might not be um, front and center when you're dealing with an emergency. It might not even necessarily be something that you're considering as part of a planned outage, depending on what your role is in that planned outage. But there are others at your utility who want to look at that information in a different way than you, and so being able to gather it provide it to them and let, then let them use whatever lens they want to look at that is, is a huge part of what we're talking about here. Yeah, it's, it's always great to, to see that the, the underlying theme uh, came through. I mean, the next three items there too are great, like system-wide risk assessment, retrospective of previous events and water loss. I mean, those are the three, the three main drivers we're kind of talking about, right? The, the ability to be proactive, the ability to learn lessons from what's happened in the past, and the ability to accurately report and to meet your, you know, your requirements. So I, I'm, I'm psyched with these responses. I'd like to thank everyone for, uh, for sharing their thoughts and, uh, and, and allowing us to look at those. Um, all right, at this point, guys, we're, we're looking for a little bit of question and answer. If there are any, I'm going to pull those open right now. Um, I don't see any at the moment, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I'll, I'll pause some time here and uh, allow you to enter any questions you may have. Um, but at the very least, let me show you off the last slide here and uh, we'll go ahead and, and see if any questions come up. So, so guys, I hope that you enjoyed the session today on Cedar outage and sort of outage management solutions in general. Um, you know, we, we run these webinars pretty much every two weeks throughout the year with a variety of topics. We're always interested in hearing from customers about topics they'd like us to cover or to spend more time on. Um, the recording of this session will be available on our YouTube channel probably within a day. Um, and those recordings are available for sharing with other people from your organization if you liked what you saw today. There's also a, a pretty good list there of past presentations we've done on different topics and different solutions within the Cedaru platform. If you're interested in following us, uh, there's our social media channels there as well. Um, but like I said, appreciate your time today. Andrew, thank you for the wonderful demo and uh, for working the great British Bake Off into your presentation as usual. Um, hopefully we'll see you guys all on next uh, edition of Cedary Live. Hope you have a good day. Mm -hmm.